You might not understand what I've just said. If you have a series reconnecting with the Quran, automatically you've deleted people who are not really keen on Islam. But if your da'wah goes beyond that, you start thinking of how would I use words that would be more palatable to those who really need to hear it. And so you use a terminology that's not wrong. It's just a different language. We said reasons of revelation. And then in fine print we said of verses of the noble Quran. Fair enough. But here we're saying reconnecting with revelation from the almighty. Because we all need it. And guess what? Now I get to the point I was making as I'm reading the verses. A few stories Allah has mentioned in the Quran. Of great motivation to all of us. One of them is. Ibrahim alayhi salam, the prophet Abraham, one of the most loved unto Allah. He was known as Khalil Allah, the friend of Allah. Why was he known as the friend of Allah? Because Allah tested him and he passed every test. He followed the instructions blindly. That was the gift of Allah. Subhanallah, amazing. He passed every test one after the other. My brothers and sisters, Ibrahim alayhi salam, one day left his child Ismail and his wife Hajar, may peace be upon them, in a desert where there was no water to begin with. If there's no water, there's no food. There was no water, there was nothing. It was a desert, arid. Sandy and rocky. And what did he do? He started walking away. His wife, knowing the loving man, the kind man, the man who fulfills the rights of his family and so on, she knew there's something happening here. We're traveling. We've come to this valley. We're left with not much. There's no water. There's nothing here. There's no people. And this man is leaving me. And my child, a child he loves because he got the child after years of trying. Years. Allah blessed him with a child later on in his life. He was much older. And so she asked him a question. Did Allah instruct you to do this? The answer was in the affirmative. Yes. She knew that's it. Allah will take care of us. What and how, I don't know. But the conviction, it's there. Conviction is probably one of the most powerful, powerful acts of worship that would cushion the problems that you face, the issues, the difficulties, the hardships, and they would make you look forward to a solution or the solution. And at times, the solution may be delayed, but the conviction will keep you afloat. So when things are not going your way and every one of us has different challenges in life, be convinced that Allah has the solution and it is coming. When the time is right, it will come. And if the time is not right on earth, trust me, you're going to get something amazing in the hereafter. But you're going to have to bear patience with the conviction. Conviction alone would not get you to the optimum level of ease. But you need to bear patience and together with that, there is one more thing. Allah's given every one of us a capacity. He's given us strength. He's given us some form of ability. You need to use that capacity, the ability and your strength to try to achieve what you want to achieve and what you need to achieve. I want to go to Saffron, for example, on Thursday night. I need to make a plan. No matter how much conviction I have that Allah is going to get me there, if I'm just going to sit at home without making an effort, I'm not going to get there. Not at all. Maybe a miracle might happen, but you know these days we're not saints on that level. Subhanallah. You need to make an effort. So make the effort and be convinced. Inshallah, Allah will guide my effort towards achieving something. And if you did not make it for some reason, guess what? Just thank Allah. Oh Allah, you saved me from something bigger. We were delayed not too long ago. 
on one of my journeys. And when we finally got to leave, people were complaining, hey, we're late, we're late. I said, no, don't worry. Perhaps Allah knows something. It's okay. I was asking Brother Shakil, you've known me for many years. When last have you seen me angry? He said, nah, I haven't. Just the one something happened and you know what? Because why? You have to hand your affairs to Allah. Be convinced that whatever's happened, you know what? I don't understand it. It might not have been so good, but it's okay. It's Allah in charge and in control. Come on, that conviction. Bear patience with it. As we were traveling, we saw a massive accident where there was a fire. And the cars were in flames. And I thought to myself, had we been five minutes earlier, perhaps... We may have been a part of this mangled metal that you can see. So that was Allah. He delayed you. It's okay. No problem. Someone's being difficult in your life. It's okay. Allah will create ease in other ways. Allah will give you little successes that wouldn't have come in your direction had this one come to you. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, his wife Hajar was convinced she had that conviction, number one, number two, she was patient. And number three, she used her energy to get up and start the search. What are you searching for? I don't even know. What are you looking for? <laughs> I don't know. Tell us again, what is it that you want? Well, I'm going up Mount Safa and then I'm coming down and I'm going up Mount Marwa to try and see if there's any sign of life. If there is a single bird in the air, I'd be able, or in the sky, I'd be able to know there's water somewhere. I'd go there. That's how intelligent they were. If you and I were in a desert, well now, had it not been for that story, I wouldn't have known. If we were in a desert looking for water, we wouldn't bother looking for where the birds are. Unless you're an expert. Bird watching, mashallah. My, br my brothers, my sisters, here is a woman. She's making an effort. Allah loved it so much. So much. Because you know what? You don't even know what you're looking for, man. And you know what? You've left it to us. You're convinced and you're patient without complaint. Allah says, we're going to make this memory eternal. The Hajj will be compulsory upon everyone who can manage right up to the end of time. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to make them run through Safa and Marwa and they won't even know why. Why do you run through Safa and Marwa? Have you thought about it? Because it's the instruction of Allah. That's the answer. I want to ponder over what a woman did in order to survive with her child. How many women are taking care of their children single-handedly? They suffer, they struggle to make ends meet, to meet deadlines, to help them go to school, to come back. to, And they face all the difficulty and hardship. This is a day we pray for you. May Allah grant you success in every way. May Allah take you to paradise without reckoning through the green route. May Allah Almighty open your doors and fling open the doors of his mercy for you. It's a struggle today. Tomorrow you shall smile. It's difficult. Where do we get this from? The story of Hajar and Ismail. Guess what? Miraculously water started gushing. Water started gushing. And it didn't just gush for a little bit. It gushed in such a way that it kept on flowing. And it kept on flowing. And you and I who are Muslims who have been to Mecca have actually seen this well. What was it? The effort of a woman. The conviction and the patience. If I am convinced about Allah's plan for me, and I try my best to achieve what I believe is beneficial. And I bear patience upon what happens in the process. Allah will open your doors. But you know when? When the time is right. It wasn't one round. She didn't just go Safa to Marwa and suddenly the water gushed. No. Allah knew the water was going to gush. How many times? Seven times. Subhanallah. That could depict seven days, seven months, seven years for me. You might have a problem for a few years. If I want that number seven, in Yusuf alayhi salam story, the same thing happened. The dream of the king that was interpreted by the Prophet Joseph, may peace be upon him. 
He says, you will see seven years, seven years, wherein you will have great produce, mashallah, and then seven years of drought, wherein which you will eat from that which you saved during the seven good years. And that teaches us that you should save up a little bit for the future. In case there is a rainy day, you need to have a little bit that you can tap into. So seven rounds and the water gushed out. Wow, don't we owe her a lot. Well, even if you don't want to acknowledge Allah has made it incumbent upon us and Allah has done something else. Ibrahim alayhi salam, as he was leaving his family and by the way, no man can ever come today and say, I've just left my wife and children to fend for themselves because I'm just following the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. I've actually had one case. I was uh, an arbitrator in a problem and the man was so such a religious guy with such a nice mashallah, you know, long bed and so on. Uh, I don't think he would miss the hajjud, but he actually told me that look, Ibrahim alayhi salam did it, you know. I said, brother, are you a prophet of Allah? Did Allah instruct you to do something? Like there was another case where a guy comes up and says, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, my father told me to divorce my wife. I don't have a problem with her, but I divorced her. I said, but why? Because my father told me, I said, your father, you're a man on your own. I would inform my dad rather than ask him at this juncture. I mean, I'm close on to 60. Come on, guys. In a few years, <laughs> a few decades. But my brothers, my sisters, I tell you, it's a fact of life. You are not a prophet. If Ibrahim alayhi salam, according to one narration, went to his, his son or he, he told the wife, you know what, tell the owner of the home that when he comes, he needs to change the, the doormat. So when Ismail alayhi salam heard about it, he said, that was my father telling me to divorce you and you can go home. That was a prophet of Allah. If at all that narration is correct, it was a prophet of Allah. Yes, indeed. And if a prophet is, is told by Allah, they wouldn't say something from their own pockets. But if your father comes to you and tells you to divorce someone you have no problem with, you love them, you tell your dad, goodbye, salam alaikum. And you walk towards your wife. So what if they call you whatever? You have taken her with the name of Allah. You don't do that. We, we love our parents. We will respect them. We will be kind to them. But never did Allah say, obey them when they are unreasonable. Not at all. One of, some of the difficulties we have today are based on the fact that sometimes we just follow what's unreasonable. We know. But we say, that's my father. I cannot replace him. That's my mother. I cannot replace her. But you, I can replace you. What a statement. What a fraud. What a blackmail. May Allah Almighty protect us. So my brothers, my sisters, let's try and understand. Here is a woman. She is going through whatever she is going through. And Allah blessed her with so much that she decided, subhanallah, we're going to share this. We're going to share this. Do you know the meaning of zam zam? Do you know the meaning of zam zam? Can someone say it? Stop, stop, stop. That's how much Allah is giving. You know, when I sit and I read Surah al duha it's a surah in the Quran. Allah is telling Muhammad, peace be upon him. These people are not appreciating you, but we want to tell you, we're going to give you very soon more than you can imagine until you are happy. Very soon your Lord is going to open your doors and grant you and give you until you are happy and even beyond. Imagine you crying for a job. Let me say something funny. And suddenly Bitcoin hits through the roof and you had five coins. MashaAllah. You've got such a surplus, you started employing people. May Allah grant us better than that. Say Amin. Come on, guys. I see you guys are into crypto. That Amin was quite loud. My brothers, my sisters, the point I'm raising is sometimes we're crying to Allah for a job. And it happens to last four, five years. There comes a point where Allah doesn't just give you a job, but he gives you so much that you become an employer and you have surplus and you need to share and you become a giver and you donate, whether it is subhanallah here or there, whatever it may be. And you give 
for the sake of Allah and you didn't even have the ability and capacity. You were crying for a simple job. But what was it? There were three qualities. You need conviction, you need patience and you need to make an effort. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.